Are you the king of the Jews? A boys and the Jew. This question is the question with which Pilate opens his interrogation or cross-examination of Jesus at the trial. What he told Rejesso. Jesu Christi Ezo Wanine. Jesus Christ, the King of the Universe. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the more you read the scripture, especially the Gospels, the more you discover the differences in details of the different Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in a very special way, the Gospel of John differs from the other three, called the Synoptic Gospels. But sometimes we find remarkable similarity in all of them, yes, of course, the message they give is the same. Nkuzi habu disufu. Manakishi deye keishi akoya dichi chiche. Manugu fodo. Inago, inago, if we be habo exact or very similar. John chapter 18, verse 33. Are you the king of the Jews? Matthew chapter 27, verse 11. Are you the king of the Jews? Mark chapter 15, verse 2. Are you the king of the Jews? And Luke chapter 23, verse 3. Are you the king of the Jews? The same question in all the Gospels. Pilate asked Jesus. The leaders of the Jews had brought him to Pilate after first having taken him to the religious leaders. They now brought him to Pilate, the political leader. Very often people say religion and politics can't mix. That is not true. It depends on how religion and politics relate. Religion has to do with the deepest conviction and faith of a human being in his relationship with God that determines his relationship with his fellow human beings. And politics has to do with the governance or arrangement of the relationship between human beings. It is not possible to separate one entirely from the other. What becomes a problem is when religion is subjected to political interests. Religion should guide politics. And in this trial, you find an interplay of the powers, the in, an interplay between religion and politics. 
in a very important way that is a lesson for every Christian, especially in a country like ours, Nigeria. The Jews or his accusers before religious leaders of the town of the time accused him of not obeying the religious rules. He wasn't keeping the Sabbath. He's only a man, he says he's a son of God, thereby making himself equal to God. But when they come to Pilate, they don't mention anything about Sabbath. They move immediately to the thing that Pilate will be interested in, the king of the Jews. And of course, this trial showed the shift of allegiance between the accusers, among the accusers of Jesus. Jewish people had always seen God as their king and leader, such that when they asked Samuel to give them a king so that they'd be like all the peoples, Samuel was disturbed and went to God, and God told him, look, it's not about you. It's about me. Give them whom they want, what they want. Let us see whether they will realize that no human being who does not take directives, instructions, light from me can rule over his fellow human beings well. But during this trial, these people who had always acknowledged God as their king declared, our king is Caesar. Jesus didn't answer Pilate's question directly. Are you the king of the Jews? The gospel said, and Jesus answered. That was not an answer. He retorted. He asked him his, himself a question. Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? And the gospel continues and says, and Pilate answered. Pilate didn't answer. He also retorted with a question. Look, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Already as early as his birth, we find the mystery playing out in his life. If you read the account of his birth in Luke, Luke's gospel puts the historical, describes the historical context of his birth about census ordered by Caesar Augustus when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. That time there was a Herod in power. But at the time Jesus was suffering, it was Pilate who was the governor of Palestine. Historical context. I will come to that later. But the wise people from the east, when they arrived, Matthew chapter 2 verse 2, where is the newborn king of the Jews? And Herod became afraid of a baby. Why? For this was I born. That I may be bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth 
hears my voice, is not afraid of me, is happy that I'm around, and he hears and follows those I lead, those who are of the truth, they who accept that I am the truth and the way, follow me. They hear my voice and follow me, the sheep that belong to me. Because they know that in me they have life and have it in abundance. And Revelation tells us he liberates us from sin. Now these powerful kings and rulers then who were so terrified by a baby or later even as an adult, a man who had no house, no wife, no children. Yet they were so afraid. Herod had a wife. He even took his brother's wife. He had children. Yet he was afraid of Jesus. Pilate had a wife. Probably also children. His wife came and warned him, have nothing to do with this man's death. I had a terrible dream last night. Now, you see what has happened? Quirinius, Augustus, Octavius, all the Herods, Herod the Great, Herod Tetrarch, Philip, Pontius Pilate. They were used to describe the historical setting of Jesus' birth and life. Now, what is the situation? When was Herod born? When did Augustus reign? When was Julius Caesar the emperor? When? You will all answer from your history books, so, 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 and so date before Christ. B, C. Pilate was governor, so, 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 and so date 44 or 40. B, C. Before Christ. Or three or four. Before Christ. That baby, that homeless wanderer, that man who had no political power or political party has now become the measure of history before Christ and in the year of our Lord. Some are changing it. Well, I admit, we admit that some other parts of the world or civilizations don't accept this classification. We know that in the Islamic calendar, they try to count the years not before Christ or after Christ, but according to another criterion. The Chinese calendar also uses other criteria. But now, general history, even those who no longer accept Jesus for who he is, will say, before common era, and in the common era. What makes the time, the era, common? Jesus Christ. His life, his teaching, his death, his resurrection. Why is it so? Well, this translation this morning, the English says, my kingship, beautiful. Dominion, beautiful influence power because when we say kingdom we think of a place basileia the word in greek can be translated as kingdom or as kingship reign jesus has said pilate look one my reign my kingship my dominion, my influence is not, first of all, not from, not from this world, not of this world. One, it is not about a place. 
and it is not its source is not from this world. The influence I have cannot be limited to a territory. It's not about territories. It is about values. It is about truth. It is about life. It's about love. It's about justice. It's about charity. It's about peace. He wasn't talking about the location. We have had so many empowers in the history of civilization. And when this feast was instituted by Pope, by Pope Pius XI, there were many powerful empires struggling for power, competing with one another for power. All those empires are gone, including the British Empire. The British are now struggling to keep their own national identity because their nation, that small island, is being overrun by other people. And that is the history of worldly powers. Now there may be another empire. After the Second World War, the Americans became so powerful that they began to think of themselves as an American empire. We know their history and their story. Many are now afraid of the Chinese. They are everywhere. And their economy and their indigenization of European technology has made them very influential. That is human. But there is this kingship, this rule, that has no end. Because it is in persons, it is in the hearts of human beings. And so long as there is even one single human being who still listen to the truth, speak the truth, live the truth, that kingship is still on. And in the world today, that kingship is still on. But my kingdom or my kingship is not of this world. In the preface, we sing during the Eucharistic prayer. We sing that the Lord establishes a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And this becomes then an invitation to all of us Christians. Are you the king of the Jews? Now ask yourself this question. Is he the king of Nigeria? Is Jesus the king of Nigeria? Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ the king of your state? Enugu state, for instance. Is he the king of your family? Is he the king of your personal life? You have to provide the answer. You may avoid the challenge he throws. Are you asking this question of my, or yourself or some other people have talked to you about me? You have to ask yourself, who is this man? Who is this personality? Who is this person? On your own. Are you one of those who reject my influence? Or are you among those who accept my influence? Are you one of those who listen to the truth? Or are you one of those who don't want to listen to the truth? And of course, there is no point claiming I listen to the truth if I don't speak the truth or and live the truth. The gospel tells us further that Pilate asked him the truth. What is the truth? And he did not wait for an answer. He went out. Reason, simple. Don't
don't make the mistake of thinking of politicians. Yes, it is easy to say the politicians are liars. They don't speak the truth and they don't like the truth. You, do you like the truth? How many times are you happy when people tell you the truth or their own perception of the truth about you? Very often we get angry, defend ourselves. Now, why not think of listening and asking yourself, what do I do that makes this person or these persons see me like this? Instead of so, do you listen to the truth? Because it is by listening to the truth that we ourselves become subjects and agents of the truth that is light and life. And all the kingdoms of this world, all the powers, empires, they rise and fall, often based on the values they promote in, its, in their relationship to the truth about life, about the human being, and about God. One of the reasons why European culture and civilization are dying today and European empires are crumbling is because they are now denying those values, those truths about God, about human beings, about life that Christianity furnished them with at the beginning of their civilization. And the possibility of a better life, better nation, better society exists so long as we allow that the kingship of Christ touches our life, that we become part of that kingship and the gents of that kingship. You know, after election, usually in every state, let me talk about state, a mature election, political parties, stakeholders, Hekbahime, the governor elect. Every day, na na kwajebe governor. Governor elect. Achokogun appointment. And of course, appointments in government are limited. So, how many people can be commissioners in one day, at one time? One person for one ministry. And they create a great ministry. And no more. Local government chairman, no more. What are special advisor on potatoes and tomatoes. So, I'm going to talk to you about the government. Now, but because those ministries and desks are limited, what do these governors do in their smartness? They create an unlimited number of personal assistants, PA, and special assistants, S.A. He's the governor's P.A. on youth. And we're commissioner for youth. So we're permanent secretary in the Ministry for Culture and Youth. He's the governor's P.A. on public relations. He's the governor's P.A. on women relations. He's the governor's P.A. on this. Okay. The king, Christ the Lord, in your baptism has made you a special P.A. Personal assistant. Personal assistant for truth, for life, for holiness, for grace, justice, love, and peace. As a Christian. Two times in a year, Catholics 
march the streets, walk along the streets singing Hosanna. Twice a year, officially. Parishes or dioceses may have reasons to hold processions. But the official universal provisions for the whole church are two. One, Palm Sunday. We carry palms in procession to imitate those who accompanied Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. The next one, today, which in our country is a procession that should have been done in June or May on Corpus Domini. The body, feast, solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. But because of the constraints of geography and climate, the bishops long, long, long ago in the 70s shifted this procession to today, Christ the King. Now this procession celebrating the Eucharistic Lord as King is being done today, Christ the King, and the Eucharist is gift. Eucharist is life totally giving. And the Palm Sunday is procession of Christ going to give himself to die. Love, service, sacrifice in your family, your local government, place of work, in the market, in the school, in the parish, in the diocese. You are an SA, but if your special assistance is not in imitation of him who be is king because he gave himself entirely, remember that the first person whom he promised to enter paradise was hanging on the cross with him. In sin, he was hanging on the cross because he was a criminal. But in that moment of agony, he turned to him and said, No, I realize my life was wrong. Help me. So even in your own sorrows, pains, disappointments, even in your own sins, if today you surrender, who are you? The world is being destroyed by human beings who want to behave like God. Whether it is in America, in England, or in Nigeria, or in Ansoka, Human beings who want to behave and be treated like God are those destroying the world. But those who give themselves entirely in service and love, those are their spe special assistants of the king of the universe. And this kingdom or kingship has no limit. So don't be waiting for anybody to tell you, there is the kingdom after Ninth Mile, or here is the kingdom in Ansoka. No, because that kingdom or kingship is already inside you, says the king himself. So long as you allow me to live in you, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, we pray. In Igbo we say, your kingship, your rulership, your reign. So long as that rulership, that reign, that or chichi jesu noni manye, then we are heirs. We are kings with him. Yes, Jesus is king. Not only of the Jews, but of anybody who is on the side of the truth, who lives the life of truth, love, peace, reconciliation, 
faith. May the King of the universe reign in our hearts. Amen.